First of all, Einstein said that time Hold it. is a river. Really? That time's not a river. Let's just correct Michi Yukaku. We're off to a bad start, ladies and gentlemen. Time is not a river. Freedom is not a water slide. These are concepts. Now, I can say freedom is like a big swamp, but it's meaningless bollocks. I put Michio Kaku, yeah, Michio Kaku has a two-minute one, uh, slightly more. Yeah, um, let's get it. Uh, while your head is older than your feet. There we go. Okay, right, we're going to cover this. So this is Big Think. Very short video. Michio Kaku, why your head is older than your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it already. Right, let's do this. Believe it or not, a clock on your head beats at a different rate than a clock on your foot. We can now measure... Um, it, really? That sounds like a, an issue with somebody building clocks. Like they're not running the same. They're just like a technical device, like a piece of technology. So you're saying that if you've got two different clocks, they won't run exactly the same. No, he's not, is he? Because he's specifically saying by inference, that the one higher up will run at a different rate that he'll qualify in a moment versus the one lower down, i.e. head and feet being the example. No, no, this is definitely going to be a reification of a time dimension by way of Einsteinian bending pseudo Romanian. Wish I could say that with a cold. Let's try. Time travelling squirrel again, isn't it? Say again. Maybe that time travelling squirrel. You've got yeah, it. The floating squirrel. Woo. Yeah, we're going to get some time traveling squirrels, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a listen. Measure this, and it has practical importance as well. First, you can measure this. Sorry, we can measure time. Like it's, it's like it's something physical, like a dimension in a pseudo Romanian. <laughs> got it. Four space time dimension. No, definitely not. You know, time's conceptual. When you're going to describe it in this manner, you're going to reify it, aren't you, Michu Kaku? We're way ahead of you. First of all, Einstein said that time Hold it. is a river. Really? No, time's not a river. Let's just correct Michu Kaku. We're off to a bad start, ladies and gentlemen. Time is not a river. Freedom is not a water slide. These are concepts. Now, I can say freedom is like a big swamp, but it's meaningless bollocks. And that's what you're about to get from Michi Yukaku. Meaningless bollocks that describes a pseudo dimension in Einstein's geometry. And he's going to reify it by way of describing it as being a river. No, it isn't. No. Time's a concept. Uh, how so is a gigantic like river world. Sorry, Ali, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, like, that's an it sounds like an interesting metaphor. How is freedom like a swamp, Nathan? Just kidding. Let's continue the video. All swept up in the river of time. Swept. Again, another physical reification of a time dimension that's bending because of the uneven distribution of mass when described in this pseudo-Romanian force-based geometry. Swept, sweeping is something I do with a brush. <laughs> Definitely not something with a time dimension when describing it as a river. No, 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 no. You're getting very lost in your own stupid metaphors here, aren't you, Mr. Rear Five? Time dimensions. And it can speed up and it slows down. For no. Time doesn't speed up. Time doesn't slow down. Merely our descriptions of it. Time, that is. And your reification of it when you take technology and describe the technology for describing time, the concept, as being somehow relatable to a river flowing in different rates? No, no, this is a technical issue with your clock, and you've decided that the, the one that's at your feet is going to go slower because of a bending fourth dimensional time dimension. No, 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 no definitely not.
For example, on the moon. Did you know? On the moon? What a stupid notion. A, on a light in the sky? Nobody's ever going to be standing on a light in the sky. This is already a flawed example. The claim that they have that you're going to be buying into with your nonsense heliocentrism belief has come to you via a sky vacuum, my friend. You know, second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum, which the gas we all breathe would want to fill if you could go and stand on the moon. Definitely not going to be the case. So this example's already bunk within three words of it. You know that time beats faster on the moon than it does on the Earth? And time beats faster, no. Even if you could put a clock on a reified rock, aka light in the sky that you definitely can't travel to through a sky vacuum, your reification of this time by way of a clock and river by way of Einstein in fourth dimension reification isn't going to fly with us here on Flat Earth Debate. And we can measure this? No, you can't. On Jupiter, time beats... Sl on Jupiter? Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Jupiter in the heliocentric model claimed to be a gas giant? Not expanding into a sky vacuum, like a whole load of storms just whipping around in a sky vacuum. So you're going to be on Jupiter? No, you're not. Slower on Jupiter than it does on the Earth. You can't go to Jupiter. You can't travel to a light in the sky. That would involve a second law of thermodynamics violation journey. So time beats at different rates. No, it doesn't. Time's a concept. The way you track it might move at different rates. You might have watches that run so at different speeds. So he's assuming that someone on Jupiter had a chronometer and this was tested. Even if they had a chronometer, a really, really is accurate it, that... watch, what difference does it make? It's describing the concept of, that we have given to what we call time. It's not in any way a physical dimension or something that's trackable in terms of a difference in the technology between two watches or chronometers. My point is that because they have to go with general relativity and the bending of space time, they have to say all these things to build up to that. So I'll, I'll let Adam refine it, I think. They're trying to add support in evidence. Support in evidence they don't actually have. So the only way they can do is to describe it within the heliocentric model, which you, it was a norm you accept because you recognize parts of that you recognize that jupiter is bigger you recognize therefore with what he's describing so subconsciously unless you're challenging it like us you'll accept that as an evidence because the the there's the statements of truth within the model even though we know the model's mugging us off and he's using the bits you'll nod along with within the model to to support his supposition that the clock is going to work differently at different distances or with different masses and different heights as he appears to be claiming here it gets you to nod along by making those statements first thing if we go to the moon you know it, there's, there's a statement of fact as, as the way he's presenting it as if that statement that you're gonna time's gonna travel differently on the moon that's a statement of fact he's not questioning it it's not a supposition it's a statement of fact that's supporting what he's telling you but we can't you can't step on the moon it's like Neil deGrasse Tyson's equivalent was to say, if you're a cloud whipping along at a thousand miles an hour in line with the rate of the rim velocity of the equator, then if you travel north as a cloud, you're like, what the hell are you babbling? I called him a hippie when he did this. Well, with Michio Kaku, it's no different. If you imagine you're on a light in the sky, so just to bring you back down to reality, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. If I wonder I'm stood on you, then time travel's different. That snap you out of the nonsense he's just spun to you because he can't give you an example of time travel or time dilation or time traveling at different rates, the things he's describing. So where does he put you? He puts you on the moon. You, you, you ladies and gentlemen of the audience, you, you on the moon often? No? Of course, my bad. It's Jupiter that you frequent. No, no, not often frequenting. You just prefer to whip around as a cloud. This is the bullshit you have to swallow as a heliocentrist. You're either a cloud or you're on a light in the sky. Like, yeah, you might just accept it because of the rhetoric being bullshitted into you to the point of acceptance without you realising it. But once we start pointing out that, no, no, twinkle, twinkle, little star, now I'm standing on you with time moving at a different rate. Uh, start contrast. Hopefully that wakes a few people up. When an object moves very I mean, fast... Please share the show, by the way, if you're watching live. Time slows down inside that rocket that is moving very fast. No, it doesn't. Time is a description we've ascribed to how things take place in our known existence. Yeah? We can give it a rate, qualification in maths, but it doesn't 
change in terms of its physics because there aren't any physics for conventions and descriptions. They're just descriptions. Now, when they only exist in mathematical terms, you have to take it on a rocket or on the moon or on Jupiter, for his example, to make sense. No, rockets aren't time machines. But that, in a sense, is what he's telling you here. If that rocket is then placed on the moon, time beats faster. So we have two... Comp I don't know. So it's not only took it from the moon to a rocket back onto the moon. No, rockets aren't time machines. The moon's not a time machine. You're not going to change the speed of time, Mr. Okaku. No. Repeating effects. This has a direct implication with regards to your cell phone. No, it doesn't. It has no implication. Again, it's just a piece of technology. Your cell phone has GPS, which allows you to locate objects on the planet. On the flat plane. The global positioning system works with Cartesian coordinates. It's working with length and breadth of the world that we experience and elevation. It's not working on a three-dimensional spherical coordinate system. GPS proves Earth's flat. And at Earth, by four... No, no, not planet Earth. No, GPS would be proving Earth's flat, like most things. They necessitate working in the way the world works, so they work with a flat plane. GPS doesn't prove satellites and global just because it's in the title. Sticking global. Uh, it's not global, it's ground positioning. And that's flat. So no way you're getting planet from this. Focusing in on satellites or... Satellites orbiting? No, definitely not. If they're orbiting, we'd have to have a curved surface. We'd have to have a curved surface falling away from us at 8 inches per mile squared with a physical geometric limitation to our view at 1.2 times the square root of the surface height and feet. We've debunked all of that. You can't have things falling around in a circle around a sphere if the ground's not a curve. Because it can't be a curve, non-spherical orbital motion. Further to that, your maths for the presupposition of an orbital motion comes with an assumption of a spherical R value. All of your maths and presuppositions need that R value to assert. We've debunked it. You haven't got a geometric horizon in the pre-show we were discussing how non-physical it is when Craig, the fight the flat earth guy we don't want to be covering, tells us how refracted it is. Right, well, non-geometric horizons aren't going to give you R values to insert into your presupposition orbital value for this satellite, Mr. Michu Kaku. Orbiting the planet Earth. Satellites travel at 18,000 miles per hour. Do they? No, that would require them to be in an orbital motion. The lights in the sky that you sometimes describe to being satellites aren't tin cans moving at 18,000 miles an hour in a sky vacuum. There isn't a sky vacuum and they're not falling around a curved surface. We've debunked every single thing that you've just presupposed. Or if they're in low Earth orbit. There is no low Earth, low Earth orbit. No such animal exists. You can't move around a flat surface and then claim that you're falling around a spherical one. You can't map the terrain with ground positioning systems that work with a coordinate system that must be flat and then assert that things are moving around a curved spherical surface when they fall around a flat mapped terrain. No, you can't make any of these assertions. Therefore, time slows down. No, it doesn't. For those low-lying satellites. No, it doesn't. There are no... Satellites in orbit, time doesn't slow down. You're not going to manipulate time. Time is merely a concept. But if satellites go farther and farther away, gravity gets less and less. Gravity gets less, what, like in a quantitative measure? It's not even a force. How are you going to describe it as being less if it's not a quantitative force? No, he's bullshitting. This guy's a liar. This is an advanced bullshitter because he should know better. He should know gravity is not a force. Less and less. So How can it be less and less if it's not a force? Time speeds up. No, nope, time isn't something that you're going to reify from being a concept into something that you can change and manipulate and speed up. Show me time. Now show me going faster. So in outer space, we have two competing effects. Outer space is fake. Outer space is sent to the minus 17 tall sky vacuum. If the sky was a vacuum, outer space then the gas we're breathing at high pressure would fill that area of volume. We'd all be dead. So no. Fast satellites slow down in time. Fast satellites in orbit, what, round a flat surface? No, that's not possible. Definitely not. 
very far away satellites slow. What, in the orbit that we've debunked? No, it's all bullshit. Speed up in time. No, they don't. You can't speed up or slow down a concept. Your description of how things progress in our known existence. It's not something you can manipulate. You're working outside of the convention when you describe a manipulation or it moving in terms of its speed. You can't show it me. You can't throw it faster. And in fact, at one radius, you can calculate... Radius? One radius of the presupposition that it's just falling around something that's mapped flat? Definitely not. Time beats exactly the same rate as it does on the planet Earth. Yeah. Notice you mentioned the radius value. We've debunked that. You need Earth as a sphere with a curved surface and measuring physical geometry. You haven't got it. Right, radius is debunked. So what does it mean? Your it means the Earth's flat and you're a bullshitter. GPS system would totally fail. If the Earth was curved, yeah, because it wouldn't plot out on the Cartesian grid system. Without Einstein's theory of... No, without a flat plane. Einstein didn't have a theory. Theories come after scientific validation. He had mathematics for a pseudo-force space dimension that turned time into a fourth dimension. That's not a theory. Special and general relativity. Nothing special about it. It's just bullshit made up dimensions that we don't experience. Time's not a dimension. It's not a fabric. You can't bend it. You can't make it go faster. It's just a description. It's just a convention that you're working outside of to turn it into a dimension that we don't experience. This also means that the top of your head, because it is farther from the center of the Earth, beats... Center of Earth? What makes you think we've got a center of Earth? You'd need to assert the radius value to determine that we've got a center of Earth as a sphere, as you're presupposing it. No, you haven't. That radius value came from a measurement of the geometry, claimed to be the physical edge of your sphere for boats to fall over. You claim boats fall over a physical geometric sphere edge called Earth curve, and that derives your R value that you're inserting to presuppose Earth is a sphere with orbital values that we've debunked. We've debunked your geometric edge. You don't have Earth curve to get an R value. You don't have geometry to measure. You know, ask anybody who's defending this shit. The people who are young and fruitful. Like, fight the flat Earth. <laughs> He'll tell you it's refracted, mate. Changes with the bloody weather. The Earth curve, that is. You can't really call it Earth Curve anymore. It's supposed to be blocking boats and buildings and stuff, but it moves with the weather, apparently. So you can't get geometry from it. You can't derive our values from it. You can't presuppose orbital values with it. So no. At a faster rate, time beats at a faster rate than your feet. No, it doesn't. We've debunked every aspect of this stupid nonsense, Michu Kaku. So you can actually show that even within your own body now. How did you show it? Did you show my feet moving at a faster rate through a medium specific to a reification of a dimension that's come from a description of a convention we call time. Did you show me my feet dying off quicker? No, you didn't. Total nonsense. Our instruments are so accurate that you could show... Instruments? Which... So back to the actual claim proof, see, which is the technology he's actually basing this on. Clocks. Clocks aren't time. In your own body... The fact that time beats at different rates. No, that's a clock. Clock's a way of you actualizing the description of the convention of time. But that doesn't mean that time, if you move the hands forward 10 minutes, that you've made time move forward 10 minutes. <laughs>